So I know a lot of you don't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear it when I started out, but it's time to start throwing away your data. And what I'm talking about is the data that has the clouds in it, trees, houses, you know, little bits and pieces that even though possibly it'll still register and stack without any issues, you're diminishing the amount of data that you're seeing in your final stack. So the issue is, is how do we do that? We're using Cyril. There's no true blink function like PixInsight does for the people that are using the OSC pre-processing script because that's all automated. But if you're doing the manual pre-processing registration and stacking and everything, there kind of is. It allows you to go through and you can look at each image before you move on and start doing the rest of the uh, pre-processing manually. Now, I know a lot of you aren't ready to do everything manually. Neither was I when I came up with this. So what I'm gonna show you today, it will add a few extra steps to the beginning of your workflow. You'll be able to look at each frame that you took on any given night and decide whether or not you wanna keep that frame. And then when you're done, then we can go over and run the OSC pre-processing script like we always have. So let's get started. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, before we get started, we have some work to do in our folder structure. Since we're still going to be using the OSC pre-processing script that comes with Cyril, we're going to want to rename our original lights directory. So I'm just going to rename mine lights org, and then I'm going to create another folder called lights. And what's what this is allowing us to do is to take and blink through, if you will, all of our original data, 87 images that I took that night, sort through them when we're in serial, remove the ones that we deem to be bad and write them back into the lights folder. So now that we've renamed the original lights folder and created a new one, we can jump into serial. And as you can see, I'm running the 1.2.0 beta one version of it, but this will work in the older version of serial as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is come over to our working directory and we're gonna change it to our new lights directory that we created. Click open, you can verify up top here. You can see we're in Thor's helmet slash lights. That's where we need to be. We're gonna come over to the right here and click on our conversion tab, hit our plus button to add the files. We're gonna back up and we're gonna find our renamed lights directory. Double click it to open it up and then control A to select all of our images. Click the add button. Now we have all of our images ready to be converted. So the sequence name, again, you can call this whatever you like. I'm just gonna call it blink. Make sure you're on fits images over here and then hit convert. Okay, it says ready, so we're done. If we come back over the file explorer just to take a look at things and we open up our lights directory. Here's our sequence file and all of our images that were converted from our Canon raw files into fit. Uh, if you're using an astronomy camera, that's fine. This will still work. So we'll minimize that. We're going to come down here and take our view out of linear and go into auto stretch so we can see. And again, this is just lights. So it's just our black and white image. As you can see up here, we have vignetting. You'll have dust modes. There's no calibration frames. These are strictly our light frames being displayed to us one at a time. So the next step is to bring up our frame list. And you can do that one of two ways. You can either come over to the sequence tab and hit the open frame list button. Or, and I'll close this, you can come down here to your toolbar and hit the button all the way over to the right that says show hide list of images in the sequence with registration data. Either way, I'll get you to the same thing. So now at this point, with the first image selected and using my down arrow key, I can go through each and every one of these images and take a look at them, right? It, it doesn't have a play function like the blink feature in PixInsight does, which I don't think it's that big of a deal. But what we're gonna do is just go through each and every one of these frames and we're gonna look for clouds. We're gonna look for the tops of trees. Maybe, you know, towards the end of the session, we started clipping the trees. We're gonna look for the side of the neighbor's house. As right ascension was ticking along that night, and we wanna go through and make sure that we have nice and clean images stuff like what we're looking at right now these are just plane trails so plane trails satellite trails you know stuff like that you you don't want to remove those ones the rejection method that the script will use during the stacking process will take care of removing these for us it'll see these lines in this image but it won't see them in any of the other ones so it'll assume it shouldn't be there and it'll remove them so again we're just looking for clouds trees houses maybe the wind blew and guiding went off and you have a frame that's got a bunch of egg-shaped stars you want to remove things like that i've gone through this one already before i started this video 
and I don't have anything in any of these frames that are of any kind of a concern, so no clouds or anything like that. So what I'm going to do just to show you the process is I am going to remove the first 10, just pretending that they all had clouds in them when I started my session. So to remove them, I'm just gonna come over to the select column and I'm gonna unselect the first 10. And the big X obviously means they're not selected. So you can see it right here. We've removed 10 of 87. So we're going to close the frame list box. And then on the sequence tab, we're going to give it another base name because we're just going to export these out now. So since this is our new group of files, I just call my, my base name new. Again, it's your choice. You can name it whatever you want. We're still in our lights directory, which we need to be because that's where the sequence is and we're gonna hit export sequence. Okay, now that that's done, sequence exported succeeded. If we come back over to our new lights directory, you'll see our blink sequence and all the blink files that we did previously. And if I scroll down, I'll see all of my new files. There's no sequence file for the new file because we simply just exported out the sequence. So what you wanna do now is look for everything that has the blink underscore prefix. You can either just do this manually like I'm going to, or you could just search for blink underscore and then delete everything that it returns back for you. So I'm just gonna click on the first file that starts with blink and I'm gonna scroll down till I find the last file that has the word blink as the prefix, hold my shift key down, left mouse click, and then delete. Now we're just left with the 77 files that we left minus the 10 that we unselected and it's in the lights directory so we're all set ready to run the script now so we'll just minimize this down but before we do run the script we want to change our working directory back up to our parent directory for the imaging session in my case it's thor's helmet because if you recall when we run the script in the other video it, this is where it's going to create our process directory for us so we want to make sure we're sitting in the root of our imaging session folder so Thor's helmet, click open. Again, you can verify up here, shows you the path of where your working directory is. And then we're just gonna come up to scripts and run the OSC pre-processing just like we always do. Okay, stacking is complete and we can just come over and open the file like we usually would. And there we go, there, you know, out of 87 images, we took out 10, so this is a 77 image stack. We come back over here, it's what I was talking about. There's our process directory as we expected in our master's directory. This is new for the beta version. So if you're not running the beta version, you won't have a master's directory. One thing I should have showed you is in our lights directory, when I deleted all the blink files, just down here, just to verify that you see that there's only 77 fit files exported out as we expected since we took 10 out of the 87. So that's all I have for you guys for this video. Myself, I was just trying to find a way I can blink through my files easily, quickly, and not just use a little thumbnail like you see in File Explorer. You know, I have Pix in sight, so I've been playing with that for the past couple months, trying to learn that. Obviously, that's where I got the idea from with their blink function and thought that was kind of cool. But, you know, just try to find another way of doing it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, let me know what you're using. If you've already got a solution in place, I'd love to hear about it. Appreciate everybody's time. See you on the next video and clear skies.